Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, welcome to Scale Model Talk. Uh, I've got some cool stuff to share with you guys today. First of all, we've got some new kits, plus the Zimmerit kits for the Panther A's from Dosport, and a brand new 1946 airplane from Amusing Hobby that not only will we show you a little bit of, but we've also actually started building it. I've put the other vehicle to the side, and this will be what's on my workbench today to share with you guys how it's coming along. So. It's a very simple kit, but kind of cool. Uh, it was actually seen, and I can't think of which one it was, one of the new Marvel movies with the Red Skull in it. It may have been even the Captain America one where they take off in some of these. And I saw that, and that, I remember seeing that video, so I go, I want to build this airplane. It's a simple kit to put together, and we should have some fun doing that. Plus, also, recently, about a month ago, I was in Germany at the uh, German Tank Museum in Munster, and since we're talking about Zimmerit a little bit in this video, I've got some really good clear shots of what Zimmerit looked like. Both some reproduction Zimmerit that's really accurate looking, and then they actually had some real Zimmerit still left on a Jagdpanzer IV uh, that's really cool to see. It's different than what you would expect on it. And then also, I was given the privilege of climbing all over a Panther A, and since once again we're talking about Panther A's, they had a Command Panther A there that I've got some raw footage wasn't actually at the time expecting to go on it so I didn't have a lot of camera equipment with me just had my iPad to take some video up so it won't be a long video but it'll be a little bit of me and actually my son climbing all over a, a Panther A that they had on there and uh, I also got to go on a Panzer IV and the uh, the Jagdpanzer IV L48 the prototype kit that, or kit the prototype model that they had there they have some of these in there and gradually as I go through the footage I'll release it in more scale model talk but today will be just the Panther A now remember it's kind of just raw footage it's just put together with some photographs as well as some of the uh, the video showing inside there but it's kind of cool to see so let's get started <laughs> Okay guys, let me show you what I'm working on the workbench right now on. I know I was going to start that, uh, that to me, uh, Japanese self-defense force vehicle, but then a bunch of other stuff came in and I kind of put that to the side for a little bit. So I was going to do this as a review, but then I thought this thing is so unusually weird and cool looking that we'd go ahead and actually just do a quick build on it. And this is a, a new kit from Amusing Hobby, their Fock Wolf. Uh, Trebflugel, I believe it's pronounced, and these are some of the different paint jobs. There's a whole bunch of different in there. But this is that kind of sci-fi looking vehicle that lands vertically, takes off by the spinning prop, and then closes up the thing and then flies uh, horizontally like this. But uh, just, it's a very simple kit, and as you can see right here, I here's the fuselage parts. So there's a grand total of like eight sprues in here. Most of them are just repeated parts. So this is the sprue for the wing. And I've already got one wing with the engine built up on it. We're working on the other one right now, doing a little sanding and filling and pinning it together. But it's going to be a super easy kit to put together. Uh, the cockpit is not super detailed by any stretch of the word. But uh, I think it'll be okay because it's kind of a small glass on it. I think everyone's going to be looking at the overall shape of this uh, this weird airplane anyway. And it looks like, because of the way the center piece is right here, I just glued, put this in. This will all be adjustable. I think there's a little bracket that goes behind here that will be able to rotate these once we get them into place. Or even just, oh actually no, we wouldn't be able to take them out if there's a piece behind it it would fall through. But we'll be able to put it in the flying position or the, uh, the takeoff position. So honestly, this is probably like a one day build. So look for a video for this coming out very, very soon. There's not much to it. Uh, it's basically gonna be putting it together for the afternoon and then start painting it, which is going to be a fun part because we'll we'll do kind of a late war camel. Probably, I don't know, I'm kind of leaning towards this one right here with the uh, the yellow and the uh, ROM, what is it, 71, and I can't think what the other color is on this one right here. Well, we'll figure it out on it. But, yep, but definitely, it's a cool little vehicle. It's a $30 kit, so it's not very expensive at all. And it looks like you could have it together, and it's kind of fits your... Luff off of 1946 stuff really well. Also, so be looking for a video of this real soon. And now I'm going to show you two other new kits from Doswerk. The first one is the Panzer Kleinzerster, uh, the Rooster. 
And you guys may look at this and go, hey, that looks kind of familiar if you watch my channel. And that is because a little over a year ago, I got an early sample copy of this kit. And it was uh, yeah, probably July of last year when Amusing Hobby was about to come out with it. And I had a prototype copy of it. Never actually saw the kit come out regular, but it did finally come out through the DOS Verk line. And it is a little prototype 1946 what-if tank. I think they didn't get any farther than making a wooden mock-up of the, uh, the thing. And I have a video of a complete build. It was a one-day build, a super simple kit to put together. Uh, but if you're building something... 1946 type or something a little unusual. The kit's only $20, so it's it's inexpensive and actually was really pretty easy to put together. Now the other kit we're going to show you is another. Let me zoom out here. This is a brand new kit right here. This is the Borgvard for Panzerjäger Vanza, and what it basically is a Borgvard, which was the uh, remote control demolition tank that they converted and put like six Panzerfausts on it, or excuse me, Panzer Shreks, Panzer Shreks on here. And believe it or not, this is a real vehicle. They had 63 of these at the end of the war, and they mainly uh, took uh, took fight in the Battle of Berlin. And in fact, there's quite a few photos online of the real thing. Some of them knocked out in Berlin after all the fighting was done. Okay, let's take a quick look inside and see what this kit is. This too is also 1999 take a look at some of the sprues here as you can see we have the individual tracks as well as lengths of track here this is the uh, the bottom and top and then this will be what will wrap around the drive sprocket and the idler wheel there are also two Panzer Shrek uh, rounds inside here with a case that you could put those inside if you want to have it stowed on the back of the vehicle so you get two sprues of that one for the left one for the right this is the gun system you can see that it is slide molded and there's are the six barrels that are on top there and finally there is the body of the vehicle little tiny guy some nice detail on the uh, the different parts here but as you can see very simple uh, and the, the decals are just some basic decals for the inside there but yeah basic kit uh, but would build up to a nice cool little thing if you're gonna put into a 19 uh, actually not 46 on this one this one actually did see combat like I was saying so like a late 445 in Berlin that would be kind of a cool vehicle to show it off in okay the next thing we're gonna take a look at uh, if you remember skill model talk number one we showed the uh, the three new Panthers that were in cooperation between Das Verk and TACOM. So they were the TACOM kits minus the interiors at a really good price. And then Dosfork got together with uh, a TAC Zimmerit and they've come up with a set of Zimmerit that matches perfectly to the three different Panthers they came out. And there's actually two different ones. The, the first Zimmerit will work on the, the early mid as well as the late Panther A. And that's what we're going to take a look at right here. But they also have the set right here for the Panther early so it is a different Zimmerit and that is because of the uh, the letterbox front on the front of the Panther as opposed to the ball turret that is uh, on the front of the uh, the, the uh, glasses plate so different a little bit different on it right there I was also discussing with someone too and I'm not positive but we'll do some research on this this actually might work on the D Panther because the D Panther has a very similar piece and then the rest of it should be you know roughly the same on it so we'll I'll do a little more research on that and see if that'll work on it uh, and we'll get back to you on that but for right now we're gonna take a look at the the late version and that is because I plan on building the late one up so I have my Zimmerit right here that we're going to show you and to start off with right here here's the Zimmerit and I'm actually I'm gonna put this piece of paper behind it and you guys can see it is super super shallow the uh, the pa it's almost on like a, almost like a looks like resin on top of like a vinyl backing to it but we'll be able to go in there with a nice sharp exacto knife and cut all of this out and then just using a little super glue we can glue it right onto our panther and I really really like the way the uh, the texture is on that it's all uneven areas and like it was put on naturally and also included with it 
is a bag of resin parts. We'll dump out all of these right here. And these are going to replicate all of the Zimmerit parts that would be honestly a nightmare trying to use this stuff on it. So, like for example, you get two different gun mantlets and some nice Zimmerit texture on top of those. And you get the cupola, which actually I didn't actually know that they put Zimmerit on the cupola all the way up on top there. I was, when I was in Germany uh, last month, got to the privilege of climbing on top of a Panther A and that is a really high up piece to try to get a magnetic mine on so didn't think they would have actually uh, put Zimmerit on there and then of course the two stowage bins and they're nicely done Zimmerit as well so you get all of this stuff the the kit of Zimmerit for all of this right here is $19.99 uh, and a great value if you want to put Zimmerit on your Panther tank this is the way definitely way to go Okay, recently I was in the uh, the Deutsche Panzer Museum in uh, Munster, Germany, and got to see some of the real tanks. And this is some of the close-up of the Zimmerit on two different vehicles. Now, this is recreation Zimmerit. It was something that was done up uh, in fairly relative times, but it gives you an idea of what the texture would look like. And then in the last little video clip we have, I actually have some of the real Zimmerit that you can take a look at and see how rough and uh, what the texture was really like on it. And here you can get a close-up look of the way Zimmerit really looks on the actual vehicle. And looking at it close up, it's actually very, very shallow. It's not deep like we always think of it. I remember when I read that book, they designed Okay. I'm coming. We have the, the same Jagdpanzer IV here, and as you can see in here, this is actually real Zimmerit. And it's very, very grainy, very, very sandy, very much like a stucco, almost, um, that we'd see in a house in the United States. But it's, it's quite, a, quite interesting to see the actual real stuff right here. I have a, a really big thrill right now. Uh, they're getting it ready as we speak, and we'll start to pull out, but we have a Panther A that they have and they've opened up and allowed me to climb inside as well. And, uh, in a few seconds you'll see me up on top in there. As we start this little video out like I was telling you earlier, we got to go inside the Panther A, so one of the gentlemen from the museum is opening it up for us right now. And climbing up on board in the yellow vest, the first yellow vest, is our host uh, Christian. And Coming up behind him is Rodrigo. Rodrigo was the gentleman I told you about that did all of the fabulous figure painting. And his new book is out from Ammo by Mig. He's also one of the owners of Action Press in Spain. So uh, you may have seen some of his books we just recently displayed on Scale Model Talk. And of course me. And finally, my son is climbing up on board. This is definitely a lot bigger. Yeah. Climb inside of this vehicle. And now we're going to jump in onto the uh, radio operator side. Well, jump's the wrong word. We're going to slowly climb into it. Okay, we're sitting in the, uh, or I'm sitting in the, uh, the cupola of the Panther, and my friend Christian here is going to tell us a little bit about this one. Yes, um, this is a little bit special because this is a command vehicle. Uh, you can see it, we have here an uh, extra uh, antenna, and there's an extra antenna too, uh, and uh, that means that the commander from, from, the, uh, from I think, five or uh, eight Panthers, is, uh, he commanded that. And uh, that means that we have uh, less emission and more radio stations inside. And you can also see it on the number on the side. That is, oh, the zero, uh, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yep. 
Yes, and what we can see here, this is the uh, arm for the um, MG yes, against uh, the airplanes, but uh, I told it Andy, uh, with only uh, MG uh, <laughs> 34 uh, against a plane is quite scary. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I just slid my way into the uh, commander's cupola on this Panther A, and I was just talking to Christian again, and Christian was telling me that this is a, a command Panther A, and it's also completely in running order as well. So they take this one out from time to time too. Fortunately, we won't be driving it today. Uh, I have some pull, but not that much pull to get it to run today. But uh, a lot more spacious in some areas in this tank. Uh, as you can see through the front here, I'm sitting in the commander's position, Hopefully we get enough light in here. It might be a little bit dark because it's kind of mostly closed up. But you can see it's almost all 100% intact inside here. There are a couple stills that uh, I have. Now you notice my son is wearing a camera in all these pictures. And he was so in awe of the vehicle too. We didn't get a ton of photos of the Panthers. But he did get about 500 photos of the rest of the museum. But this was so cool to be on here. So here's just a few of the uh, the shots, some close-ups of the Panther, the way the tools are, etc. on it. And the barrel is actually at neutral position right there, and that's how tall the barrel is on a Panther tank. Me sticking through the vision port in the uh, the driver's area, and more shots up on top of the uh, on top of the tank. Well, there you go, guys. There's a quick uh, review and look at all these different products that are just coming out now. All these are actually all available in the United States, and we even have them here in our store. I uh, hope you enjoyed, too, the little look at the, uh, the Panther tank. I had a blast at that museum. It was so much fun. And I should have taken more photos and stuff, but I wasn't, like I said, planning at the time to get to go in all that stuff. And I was having so much fun, I actually kind of forgot to take more photography of it. But it's a great place that if you're in northern Germany, definitely go and check that out. They have so many armored vehicles there. It's incredible. Uh, lots and lots of stuff to look at. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.